Will we be godly pictures of passion? That's the title of the sermon today. And the picture that I want you to see is found in Philippians 3. And uh, we will look at uh, verses 7 through 14. And as we look at those, you're going to see that it's very evident that Paul had a heart for lost people. Developing a heart for lost people calls for passion. And we may think that a person has to just automatically have that passion, but they don't. Paul didn't have that passion when Jesus first called him, and neither do we. To have a heart for lost people, we must first have a passion to know Jesus Christ. And that's what Paul teaches us in this scripture. Uh, He shows us a passion, his passion, to know Christ. Now, Paul wrote this from prison. And he was in prison because he had been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. But being in prison did not make his zeal, his passion to waver. Paul, or Deborah, read in the first six verses of chapter 3 there uh, some of the accomplishments of Paul. Uh, At that time, uh, actually when he was Saul, and later his name was changed to Paul when he came to, to meet, when he came to Jesus. But those achievements in the religion of Judaism made him a superstar of his day in that religion. But we see in the uh, verses 7 through 9, that Paul thought very little of those achievements. Let's read those verses. Paul wrote, But everything that was a gain to me, I have considered to be a loss because of Christ. More than that, I also consider everything to be a loss in view of the surpassing value of of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, because of Him I have suffered the loss of all things and consider them filth so that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own from the law, but one that is through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. Paul's life had changed dramatically when he met Jesus on the Damascus Road. His spiritual transformation began right there and then when Jesus took hold of his life. He changed from being a passionate leader of Judaism, you might even say a bully for Judaism, to being a passionate missionary to people who were lost without Jesus. See, Paul came to realize that all he had accomplished was nothing. It was nothing compared to the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus his Savior, and his Lord. Now the word surpassing describes just how value, uh, how great a value Paul put on knowing Christ. And the word knowing means more than just knowledge of, of someone's existence. It is knowing someone through experience and personal relationship. Paul gave up all his past to gain Christ. To have a close 
personal relationship with Him. All in Paul's life before Christ became filth, which can also be translated dung, manure, trash. And speaking of trash, Sheriff was out driving one day and he saw a fellow dumping trash out of his pickup truck into a ditch. And he stopped and he said, uh, can't you read that sign above your head? And the man said, yeah, that's why I'm dumping it here. Because it says, fine for dumping garbage. Oh. <laughs> don't try that. Don't, don't try that. And that's what Paul was doing. He was dumping the garbage from his life. That's what he considered it. Now that he had come to know Jesus as his Savior and his Lord. He came to know that righteousness from God through Christ based on faith had a better future than the self-righteousness of keeping the law. Now, in verses 10 and 11, we see Paul's goal here. <clears throat> My goal is to know Him, Christ, and the power of His resurrection, and the fellowship of His sufferings, being conformed to His death, assuming that I will somehow reach the resurrection from among the dead. Paul's goal was to know Christ and to know the mighty power of His resurrection and also the fellowship of Christ's sufferings. Paul did not want to just be acquainted with Christ. He wanted to learn about Him. He wanted to learn from Him so that he could have a very, very close relationship with Christ. Paul wanted a relationship where he would experience the power of the Holy Spirit in his ministry for Christ, even if it meant suffering for Christ. Is that our goal? That's some go. Are we like Paul? Are we learning from Christ so we can display the difference that Christ has made in our lives? Many Christians don't want to suffer. Many Christians uh, don't want to suffer but e even for Jesus. And many Christians don't want to suffer inconvenience. Not even for Jesus. But if it's something we really, really want to do, the end of convenience won't matter. I don't want to suffer. You don't want to suffer. And folks, when you read about what Paul went through in the book of Acts and in some of his letters, we'll probably never ever have to experience what he did. I mean, he had a lot of opposition. And yes, there are people out there today who still oppose the gospel. But we have to take that in stride and not give up. Move on. Paul had great faith. And he had that great faith because he had that close personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And because of that relationship, he had no doubt that he would experience death and also resurrection. 
from that death. And I hope that each one of us who are here today have that kind of faith that they know that when they die, that one day they will be resurrected from that death. I, I was thinking of brother for a, a Bill Fowler who used to come here, and of course he's passed on, and uh, uh, Bill and I used to visit together, and uh, he would ask people, uh, are you going to heaven? And they would say, well, I hope so. And Bill would say, don't hope so, know so. And from there, he would uh, try to lead them to know for sure that they were going to heaven. Verse 12. Not that I have already reached the goal or am already fully mature, but I make every effort to take hold of it because I also have been taken hold of by Christ Jesus. Paul had not reached his goal of being spiritually mature, which is knowing Christ and that mighty resurrection power of Christ. He had not gained the intense personal knowledge of Christ that he desired. He had not become all that Christ wanted him to be. But Paul hadn't given up. He hadn't quit. He continued to pursue the goal to achieve that knowledge. Now why did Paul make that kind of effort? It wasn't just because he wanted to be smart, but because he knew he had been bought at a price. Jesus had died for his sins. And Paul said that he was the greatest sinner ever. He felt that way. But Jesus had died. He had taken hold of Paul. And he was experiencing the eternal, meaningful life that Jesus came to give him. And not only that, but Paul knew that he was chosen and had been taken hold of by Christ. And not only that, but he knew that this goal that he has came from Jesus Christ Himself. And guess what, folks? Because Christ died for our sins, we've been bought at a price. We've invited Him into our lives. And Christ's goal, just like Paul, is our goal. Paul is a godly picture of passion. An example that we should follow if we are to be godly pictures of passion. Paul had a passion for knowing Christ and the power of His resurrection. And that passion drove him to have a heart for those who did not know Jesus Christ. Paul knew what that life was like. And he wanted other people 
to leave that kind of life and to trust in Jesus. Like Paul. If we are saved by the blood of Jesus, then we should have the passion to know Christ and His mighty resurrection power. And without that, without that passion to know and experience Christ in our lives, we are not capable of having a heart for the lost. And folks, we should not allow anything, anything to keep us from fulfilling that Christ-given goal. If we are not achieving our goal, then Christ is calling us today to be revived spiritually. Now, on the back of your bulletin, there is something that I think can help us uh, realize what might be hindering our passion. And we're just going to run through this, uh, but I hope you'll take the time later if you haven't already done it. I had it on the back of the bulletin last week, and maybe you've already done it, but take time to do this and think about these questions and answer them. First of all, what do you sacrifice for the most? What do you daydream about? Then it says, if I just had more blank, I would be happy. Fill that in. Where do you spend your time and money most frequently? In what do you tend to seek significance, worth, value, and acceptance? Before Paul met Christ on that Damascus road, it was his religion, obeying the law of Judaism. After Jesus Christ, all of that changed. Now after answering those questions, ask yourself this one. Am I a godly picture of passion? Do I have a heart for those who do not know Jesus? as Savior and Lord. If we do, then that we are a godly picture of passion on mission with God. If we are not a godly picture of passion, then we need to do as Paul did in verses 13 and 14. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead, I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. Paul might have been thinking about Runners in a race here. Because runners uh, are not to look back when they're running. That will slow them down. And runners want to keep their eye on the finish line. They want to keep their eye on the goal. And Paul knew, even though he was in prison, that he was still in the race of life. And though he had not reached his goal, he didn't fill his mind with his past accomplishments. But he continued toward his Christ-given goal. He knew there was more learning and there was more work to do For the Lord. Paul pursued his goal. His prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. He knew that earthly prizes and things do not last. Only eternal prizes do. And folks, we need to remember that. 
Look at what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 9, verses 24 and 25. Do you not know that the runners in a stadium all race, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. Now everyone who competes exercises self-control in everything. However, they do it to receive a perishable crown, but we an imperishable one. In the late 1950s, missionary Jim Elliott gave up his life to reach a hostile tribe in the jungles of Ecuador. He said some words that have lasted over the years and are still important. He said this, He is not a fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Paul and Jim Elliott. knew all about that sentence. He is not a fool who gives up what he cannot keep. There's nothing on this earth we can keep, folks. So we need to let it go so we can gain what we cannot lose. Paul was not where he wanted to be spiritually. But he wasn't going to be distracted by anything. And he was going to continue to pursue his goal. Both discipline and determination are required if we are to accomplish the goal that Christ has given us. Will we, dis- will we be disciplined and determined to become godly pictures of passion? Will we be disciplined and determined to reach our goal of knowing Jesus and His mighty resurrection power? Will we be disciplined and determined to live our lives on mission, helping others come to know Jesus. If we if we are ready to do that as Christians, this is your invitation today. If you're not a Christian, Jesus wants you to experience his love, his grace. His undeserved favor toward us. His mercy. God didn't give us what we deserved. But He gave us what we did not deserve and that was salvation through the shed blood of Jesus. We invite you to come.